you know what the CODB is, right? Uh, raise your hand if you don't know what the CODB is. Everybody knows. Okay, great. So um, we've, been, we've been using Plon for years and years, and some people have used it uh, for like 10 years, and they don't know that CODB has uh, underneath uh, a package that, that is responsible for the transaction mechanism of, of SOAP. If you have visited the undo tab of, of a Plon site, uh, you have interacted with, with a transaction mechanism. When you go, when, when the customer removes the, the main website folder and calls you in panic, uh, hey, I removed the folder, I need something to do, and, and you go to the CMI, press select the, the change, press undo, and the customer says, wow, how did you do that? Okay, uh, if you've done that, you have been working with transactions. So CODB is, is really uh, a very important component of, of loan. Uh, you can have transparent persistence for Python objects, which means when you change something, uh, it's automatically saved in the database, and you don't have to do anything. It is scalable. You can use CEO, and, uh, uh, and there's also a, a replication solution for for Plon that's called SOAP Replication Services, which recently was open sourced, so you can also scale horizontally, vertically. It's a very powerful database uh, that almost nobody uses. And, uh, and there's transactions. The transaction support was part of the CODB. It was uh, in there, but Chris McDonald took it out back in 2008 or something. No, 2008. Seven, I don't know, around there, and uh, it's now a standalone package, and you can use that standalone transaction package in any Python application. Um, so, to understand how transactions work in in Plone, you need to understand a few concepts. Uh, first, of course, transactions. Transactions means that. There are some changes done to the database, and it's an atomic thing that that is done uh, and and is kept track of, so that you can, uh, in the case of Plon, you can take it back, and you can log any any changes that have been happening, uh, and uh, to handle the transactions, uh, Plon Soap has a transaction manager. The transaction manager is the one responsible for actually. Uh, taking care of the, when to start the transaction and when when to commit and what happens uh, at, the, at every point of the transaction, and it's really part of the CODB and and you don't really need to do anything. The transaction package comes with a transaction manager, which is the default, and it's really pretty good at what it does. So you basically don't need to to change anything at this level. But there are also a, a data managers. A data manager is uh, the piece of software that actually talks, in this case with the CODB, or when you're using a relational database, for example, if you're using SQL Alchemy and you have the SOAP SQL Alchemy package, that's the part that talks to the SQL Alchemy API and takes care of uh, actually committing and actually uh, saving those changes when, when, you, when you do a commit, or actually rolling back the database when you, when you abort a transaction. Uh, Plon, uh, the CODB uses a two-phase commit. That means that the changes are not stored immediately in the database. But uh, you make a change, and, it, and it's there. And then all the data managers that take place in there, uh, both if there's any kind of error, the transaction is aborted. And if not, it's saved. So for example, when you start a request in Plone, you can make a dozen changes to the data. You can remove stuff, delete, update. And, and as long as the request uh, is the same request, everything will happen in one transaction. If something happens, something bad happens near the end of the transaction, it just rolls back and, and doesn't commit the, the changes. And, and you end up with the same consistent state that you had before you started the, the transaction. That's actually a very powerful mechanism because you can have more than one data manager. And 
when Plon, when Plon is going to commit something, all the data managers that are participating in the transaction get to vote. So if you are storing something in, in the CODB and it works perfectly, but there's also something that you are storing in, in a SQL Alchemy thing that, that you have uh, in the same uh, request, uh, and something goes wrong in the SQL Alchemy thing, when the transaction is aborted, both data managers will abort. So everything will be consistent on every data manager that you have, not just on, on the on this point where the error occurred. The other thing that the transaction has is save points, which is when you have something that requires many steps in a transaction, and you know that you got to a point where what you have is consistent, and you don't want to do it all over again if something fails, you have a save point, and you say, here, this is, will be a save point. And at this point, everything that has happened in, in the request will be committed to the database. After that, if something goes wrong, it will not roll back to the initial uh, operation. It will just roll back to the save point. That's also very useful when you have, for example, very long list of things that, that, that are going to happen on the same operation. So in Plone, you don't really have to know this. Even if you develop products, you seldom get to interact with the transaction mechanism. Everything is handled transparently. It just happens. What SOAP does is that when the transaction starts, when the request, web request starts, it starts a transaction, the transaction begins. And when the transaction is over, when the response is sent to the browser, uh, just before that, the transaction is committed. So you, in practice, you seldom do that. Like I told you at the beginning, if you used undo, you have used uh, transactions. But sometimes there are cases when using uh, transaction features directly can be useful. Um, you can import transaction inside your plone code, import transaction, just like, like, like it sounds. And it's especially useful when you have long running processes. Uh, for example, if you are going to import something has anybody here used Transmogrify? A collective Transmogrify? It's a mechanism for importing content into Plone. Export, importing, exporting. You know. And uh, it does use uh, transactions heavily. Um, well, for example, this collective Transmogrify, this is actual collective Transmogrifier code. And as you can see, it imports transaction in there. And where you're importing something, it runs a loop to all the things that you're importing. You might have, for example, uh, 30,000 contact, uh, contacts from, from a Salesforce database that you want to import. Uh, and when you want to import, you have to go through every single one of those uh, 30,000 contacts. So uh, usually the mechanism that uh, CODB uses is to store everything in RAM. So if you go through 30,000 um, contacts in one go, the RAM used by, uh, by the process will be huge, and uh, the time taken will be really long. So uh, instead of doing that, what if you could, for example, save the state of the imported contacts every 1,000 contacts? That's, uh, if you remember what we were discussing just recently, it's a save point. You want to save every 1,000 contacts and make sure that they are saved. Transmogrifier includes uh, a configuration flag that's named every. Uh, it's not important how, how that works right now, but what's important is that every uh, X number of uh, interactions, iterations, sorry, from in the loop, you want to save what's there. So you import transaction, and when you have a an even number of transactions that, that's uh, according to this number, say 1,000, uh, you make a save point, just transaction save point, and, and that takes care of saving the 1,000 contacts and then and 2,000 and then and 3,000, and, and you commit all that information to the database. As long as, in an import operation, as long as, as everything is importing correctly, you don't care if, if you have to start with uh, 30,000, or if something fails later on, you will start with 20,000, 
and uh, stuff like that. So, uh, as you can see, this is used in, a, in an actual uh, Plum product that many of us have used, and it can be very handy. Uh, the optimistic thing here just means that uh, the transaction assumes that all the data managers have a rollback capability, which uh, right now I think most of them have. Unless you're, you're using SQLite or something like that, you will have a rollback capability. But uh, if you don't, uh, everything works, except if there's an actual error. <laughs> the optimistic thing is that we're, we're hoping that there will be no problem. But, uh, well, that's how it works. If you do an actual import script yourself, instead of using uh, Transmogrifier, you can also use transaction directly, just import it, and uh, whenever you want to commit something, just say transaction commit, and that's that. It, it's saved on the, on the database. If you're running a script with, in, with a live clone site, and you forget this part, nothing will be saved. So when you are actually interacting with, with clone at that level, it's really important to, to, re to have the transactions here. But as you can see, it's very easy to use. You just import transaction and use transaction commit when you want to commit, transaction abort if something bad happens, and, and you run. Uh, as long as your data manager takes care of everything, you can, you can use that. So uh, exactly the same as, as I showed here, you can use it outside of SOAP, uh, even without the CODB. You don't need the CODB for transactions. You can have a pure uh, relational database application that you want to use, or even a file system-based application that, that you want to use uh, that has transaction support, full transaction support. And depending on, on the data manager that you use, uh, you will have also uh, rollback possibilities, uh, save points. And to use it inside a package, it's just as simple as, in, as using it in Plone, except that you actually have to install it in your application. So uh, you could probably do easy install transaction and, and have it. Uh, if you do that on, on, on a virtual M, for example, you could test uh, this code exactly as, as I'm going to show it. Um, and uh, you need a data manager or a backend, if you may. And uh, for example, if you are going to use the CODB, in your application, just easy install. Oh, I forgot the underscore here. Easy install CODB. Or if you're using SQL Alchemy, easy install SQL Alchemy. And in the case of SQL Alchemy, uh, you also need to install uh, the data manager, which is SOAP SQL Alchemy. And that's it. That's all you need. If you are writing an application that you want to distribute in, in your setup PY, in the requires section, you just add transaction and, for example, SOAP, SQL Alchemy, and you're set. You can use transaction support in your application. Uh, I'll show an example of how to use it using the CODB. If you're using the CODB, uh, it's, everything is ready to, to use. So uh, here we, we import the DB and the file storage thing to, to have our database stored in, in a file storage, and the file will be named testfs. If you have a virtual M with transaction installed you can, and CODB, you can run this code as it is. Um, and then you have to open a connection. And now you have a root object, which is the root of, of, of your CODB. In Plone, that would be uh, the thing that we, we saw on visit, which is the, the thing at the root of the CMI where the Plone site is. That's the root. Here, we have an empty, an empty root the first time at least that we use it. And just for the sake of an example, if you add something at the root uh, and then use transaction commit, there it is. Uh, the CODB automatically joins, the data manager automatically joins the transaction. And when you do this, the change is final. If you try this code and omit this, when you get out of the Python interpreter and come back, there will be no, no uh, example there. But if you use transaction commit and you come back, you will see that the data is preserved. 
it's not very different with SQL Alchemy. Uh, you just have to include one extra piece of, of, of code. This is normal code for getting uh, a SQLite uh, memory database. And we create a very, very simple table with ID, login, and full name, and create the data. That's standard SQL Alchemy stuff. Doesn't have to do with transaction at all. And then comes the part where we integrate with the transaction mechanism using the SOAP transaction extension, which is in the SOAP SQL Alchemy package that I showed before. Uh, all you have to do is import the SOAP transaction extension and add it as an extension in the usual uh, SQL Alchemy bind step. When you do that, um, you can use import transaction and transaction commit. And uh, this is just a standard SQL Alchemy code. We add a user. And until we say transaction commit, it will not be saved in the, in, permanently in the database. We can, of course, also abort a transaction. We can, it, it's the same code as the step before. In this case, we import transaction and add a user, ID2. If you were in the command line, you would see that if you, if you query the, the database at this point, the user will be there. And you, you can make a query, and, and it will show John Smith there with ID2. If you then transact, do transaction abort, he will be gone. Yeah. If you do a query after this transaction abort thing, the user will not be returned on, on the results. So of course, in, in this example, it's silly who would abort after just one line, but if you have longer code and many things happen in your code and you find an error condition, you just do transaction abort and boom, you are back to the safe state that you started with and everything is safe. Um, there's a little matter of um, batteria do laptop criticamente baja. Um, Sorry about that. I don't know why you're saying that. Has that been there the whole time? No. no. Oh. You have to turn on this thing. OK. Uh, concurrency. There are many times uh, where, for example, many users may attempt to modify the same thing at the same time. And so you would ask, what does transaction do in this case? How does it help you? It doesn't. You have to do it yourself. It's not hard. Um, usually, uh, what, will, what can happen in this, in this case is that uh, something that we call transient errors, which mean errors that are not really critical. It's just some user that's trying to do the same thing, some ID that's, that's uh, repeated. Or, uh, something like that. So the, the, the thing that you have to do is simply try again. Try again uh, as many times as you wish to wait for the other user to go away or, 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 or simply to hope that everything works the second time around. For these kind of errors, it, it doesn't matter if, if there's an error because it usually means just that the resources are busy or that someone is trying to, to use an illegal, illegal name or something. So this is really the, the most common mechanism to, to treat concurrency problems. It's so common, in fact, that a uh, transaction manager already knows to look for a should retry method on your code. So if you have uh, transaction, let, let's say we are still in, in SOAP SQL Alchemy, and we want to know if, if we should retry or not. Why, why do we have the option of retrying or not? Because there are errors that are really critical and they endanger the integrity of the database, and you don't want to retry, retry on one of those. So uh, in the case of SQL Alchemy, this is the actual SOAP SQL Alchemy code. Uh, the should retry method uh, first tries to see if the error is just a concurrent modification error. That means someone else is trying to modify the same resource. So no big deal. 
someone will modify it first, someone will, will do it second. So you just return true, which means, yeah, go, go ahead, we try it. If the uh, error that is passed to should retry is a DB AP, API error, in this case, you want to make sure that the error is retriable. So uh, in this case, so, uh, SQL Alchemy has a list of retriable errors, which it, kn it knows are safe. Uh, and we simply ask, if, is this one of the safe errors, or is it a, a dangerous error? And if it's a safe error, we just return true. If it's dangerous, uh, uh, it, it returns false automatically because we fall back down here and, and there's no, no code, so it, it returns none. There's also some transaction-aware middleware that you can use in your code, and you don't have to actually write uh, or import transaction or do anything else. Uh, for example, there's repose tm2, which is a whiskey thing that you can plug into your into your pipeline, and you will get transaction support. It will do exactly like SOAP, start a transaction at the beginning of the request, and commit the transaction at the end of the request. Uh, if you use Pyramid, we have a Pyramid TM that does mostly the same, but in, in, in a Pyramid uh, specific way that's, that's better for, for Pyramid. But basically it's the same. It will start a transaction at the beginning of the request, commit the transaction at the end of the request. If there are any errors, it will automatically roll back. So if there's an exception in your code, you don't have to watch out for, for problems with the transaction. The middleware automatically will roll back to the previous state. There are other features. Like I said, you can connect multiple data managers. You can have two, three, four data managers in different services. And if you write a data manager for file system and one for SQL and, and one for, for the CODB, uh, all three of them can be used at the same uh, transaction. And all three of them, once they are joined, will roll back if there are any problems or commit if the transaction finishes successfully. There are also some hooks that you can use to insert code before the transaction occurs or after the transaction occurs. Uh, and there's this thing that we call synchronizer that is just uh, synchronizes with the transaction and gets noti notified of any transaction events. And finally, there's this notes functionality. You can at uh, attach some notes to any transaction you do so that in, in the CODB logs or in the logs that you that you create for your own package, you will see uh, some meaningful notes. Instead of just uh, an o object ID that's pretty weird, you might actually say, inserted customer John Smith into the database in, in, the, in the note. And well, that, that's it. Uh, there are documentation for, for the transaction package, like an overview and, and all the things that, that we did here. They are documented here, so you can take, take a look at there. And if you want to contact me, there's the information. Um, any questions? No? Ah. In Plone, the concurrency is handled uh, how? Can you explain something about that? Yeah, uh, by default, uh, it will retry three times. So if, if something bad happens, it will retry once. And if it still gets an error, twice. And, and there, there will be a, a third retry. After the third retry, it throws an error. And, and, and you get, a, for example, a concurrency error. You might, might have seen some, something like that in, in the log sometime. No, in Plone handles everything. Uh, you only need that. Uh, you don't even need that in, in an import script or anything. It, it's in Plone. You, I don't think you'll ever need to to worry about that. Uh, CODB uh, takes care of everything, and SOAP all, all, all over that takes care of that too. So, just when you're writing your own thing, uh, you should think about concurrency. In Plone, just you can rest easy. Um, any other questions? Well, thank you very much. Uh, yeah.